Hello everyone, this is Sunny, and I'll be sharing my top five takeaways from Randy Clark's There Is More, Reclaiming the Power of Impartation. Randy Clark is the founder of Global Awakening. Bill Johnson writes uh, the foreword and credits him for being the greatest impact on Bethel Church's healing ministry. Now that's quite a statement for Randy Clark and his ministry. Randy Clark was the catalyst that God used in the 1994 Toronto blessing or revival. And there are testimonies from there that are pretty crazy. Um, and uh, uh, the Global Awakening uh, is, is pretty awesome. You can check out the, the link and what's going on there. I'm actually a part of their apostolic network of Global Awakening, ANGA. Um, that means I acknowledge Randy Clark and actually Bill Johnson as my spiritual covering. And what's cool about them is that they want to make sure that I'm covered as well locally. And so I have a local church. So I'm excited. I'm very thankful. And, and this is why as well you see books by Bill Johnson and you're going to see some by Randy Clark because uh, I want to honor these spiritual giants in, in the field. They've done much for Christianity. This book in particular talks about um, the impartation, how in Hebrews chapter 6, it was some a, a fundamental teaching, the laying on of hands. And so he really goes through the laying on of hands and the doctrine of impartation throughout the book. I'm only going to highlight my top five takeaways. Uh, one more thing, he has crazy, crazy, many, many, lots of testimonies as well of people being impacted by the power of impartation. And so most of these takeaways are going to be from the um, from others that have been influenced by him. Uh, nevertheless, we give credit where credit is due, and they would as well. So we'll go into the five top takeaways. Number one, this is uh, from, uh, name is Lucas Sheridan. Uh, Lucas received an impartation from Gary Oates, who received an impartation from Randy Clark. And uh, the takeaway is this, hindrances to unhindered revival hindrances to unhindered revival. So Lucas was shown a vision of what God was doing in his city. And uh, there was this homogenous, gigantic fireball above the city. And it was covered by a net. So this net was keeping it. And here and there, some fire would fall and good things would happen where it fell. This was a good fire. And an angel uh, was in this dream and in this dream or vision. And Lucas uh, was curious on what the net was. And uh, Angel gave a close-up or gave an insight on what the net was, and the net had on it uh, two, two words. The two words were unforgiveness and broken relationships. And the lesson being, if this city learned to deal with unforgiveness and broken relationships, that unhindered revival, that fireball would have fell on the entire city. I don't know if that gets you, but that gets me. That's a takeaway for me. Uh, unforgiveness and broken relationships. Yeah, I want to keep these two in check uh, because I do want the anointing and blessings of God. Um, I want greater anointing, greater effectiveness. I'm not talking about salvation. I got it. But greater anointing, more intimacy. Yeah, uh, broken relationships and, and unforgiveness. I got to make sure these two things in my life are good. Anybody have a little uh, heat check right now? A little conviction? Okay, you can stop this video right now and just start praying and, and get to work on these two areas. Um, or you can continue and work on this uh, at the end. Second takeaway, gifts fueled by love. Gifts are to be fueled by love. Gifts are to be fueled by love. Now, this is what he does. He takes 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14 talk about gifts of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 13 talks about love and the importance of love. Now, Randy Clark says this. Most, a lot of people will that, that downplay the gifts would say, look, love is more important than the gifts. Paul says, I'll show you a more excellent way, and, and that is love. And, and without love... Um, uh, uh, giving is nothing. Um, prophesying is nothing. Tongues is nothing. Without love, uh, if I sacrifice my body, it, it's nothing, right? But Randy Clark is highlighting, hold up, in the context, Paul is not saying gifts are nothing. He's actually showing us how to better use our gifts. We use our gifts in love. 
Love are, is to fuel our gifts. So gifts are important, but without love, oh, gifts can hurt. Gifts can um, send the wrong message. Uh, love is great, but we want to love effectively, and we can do that with the gifts. So uh, make sure, we need to make sure that we are full of love when we are ministering as best as possible, when we are using our gifts, that we are loving the people that we are serving. That was number two. Uh, number three, biblically ground your people. Biblically ground your people. Now, a pet peeve of mine is when um, charismatics are, are seen as people that don't love the Word of God. They, they, when, they look like they don't know the Word of God. That really gets me because uh, when I got into the charismatic world and I saw their love for God, Jesus, the people, and the Word of God, I said, wow, I was misinformed when I was on the other side of the spectrum. And so he talks about Heidi and Roland Baker. Heidi, Heidi and Roland Baker do an incredible work in Mozambique. They started hundreds of churches. They see the, 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 the blind see, the, the deaf hear, and even people raised from the dead. It's crazy. And um, uh, they, they have a doctorate degrees, at least uh, advanced. I think they, I think, definitely Heidi has a doctorate degree. I don't know about Roland. I'm pretty sure he does. But they studied and studied and studied, and God convicted them that when they raise up pastors, they need to teach them the Word of God give them strong, solid uh, Bible doctrine so that they will not fall into heresy and cause others to fall into heresy. So that's huge. All you charismatic Christians, I hope you are biblically being grounded in the Word of God and uh, make sure nothing you do contradicts the Word of God. And so um, biblically ground your people in the Word of God. Okay, I'm just going to let you know I got something for you below as well. Um, I'm working on like samples and stuff like that, but I made a course called Cover to Cover where I teach the entire Bible, Genesis to Revelation. I go through every book and teach about the, the overall biblical narrative in four hours. And so you could check that out below. Uh, I think the first four uh, lessons are, are, are free. And then you could, you could take a look and, and the rest is like a nominal fee. It's, it's really uh, a bargain. So. Um, you might want to consider that. I'm going to move on. Uh, number four, people movement. I haven't heard about this. People movement. So there is a, a church growth expert. His name is Dr. Donald McGavern. And Dr. Donald McGavern talks about people movement. So I guess this is a phenomenon where uh, scores and scores of people are, are ripe to receive Jesus. And so he saw this in India once upon a time that there are so many people, the harvest was plentiful, like, like the harvest, like people were coming to the Lord and it was just something that was happening. The atmosphere was ripe for an entire region to receive Christ. And they were calling on missionaries, even from other regions of like India, to come to this place. But what happened was these other missionaries stayed in their place, the ones where the harvest was coming, where everything was happening, um, God was working. They didn't have enough help. People were getting burnt out. And what happened was that window was closed. And so he's telling us, so when you see this window, okay, uh, just you just want to honor what God is doing in this region. Go there, bless them, and, and bring back the blessings to wherever you go. And he's saying at the time of this writing that Mozambique is that time right now. Mozambique is the time of, of crazy blessings. It's ripe. You want to bring teams there. Um, just check in with, with what's going on, but, but, but be spiritually attuned with what's happening around the world and, and you want to be there as well to catch what God is doing. And last but not least, number five. I just want to end with how to receive an impartation. So I think that's important. Randy Clark has a lot of uh, info, advice on how to receive an impartation. Uh, basically, he says three things. Number one, confess our lack. Whether our lack is love or power, confess it. Okay, you don't get nothing by, by faking it with God. Confess it. If you're lacking love or lacking power, confess it. That's step number one. Number two, earnestly desire the change. You just can't say, yeah, I lack love. So what? No, 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 no. You lack love, but you want it. You desire it. You want that hunger for love. You want to love people like Jesus loves people. You know it's hindering your ministry. You know it's hindering um, your, your testimony. Then, then we have to earnestly desire uh, the change. And number three, live lives to honor God and be used in His service for His glory. 
So we're not just gonna grow in love and power, we're gonna live lives of integrity. We're gonna walk out the Christian life, have that commitment even beforehand, and God will honor that. Uh, he gives some other advices that I didn't write down. For example, you know, people fall in the spirit, they get slain, and he's like, don't, don't try to fall and like force it, but don't try to force yourself to stand either. He's like, both are in the flesh. I'm like, huh, I never thought about it that way. But when you try to fall, you're, you're, you're just using your flesh. And then when you're trying to stand, then you're, you're resisting and you're, you're, that's also in the flesh. I thought that was helpful. It just popped up right now. So five takeaways, how to receive an impartation, confess our lack, whether it's power or love. Number two, earnestly desire the change. Change isn't always easy. Number three, uh, live lives that honor God uh, to be used in His service and for His glory. Number four, people movement. Be aware of what's happening and you want to go where God is growing and blessing and you want to at least get a taste of it. You don't have to leave everything to commit to there, but at least be understanding of certain times where we need to shift. Number three, biblically ground your people. Uh, we know that God's word, uh, well, we cannot contradict God's word. We need to live lives and we need to uh, have ministries that honor God's word, do not contradict God's word, which means we need to know God's word. Number two, gifts are to be fueled by love. So remember the connection between love and gifts, they work very, very well together. Um, one without the other is not the most effective. Obviously, gifts can do great things and love can do great things, but together they do even greater things. And number one, uh, hindrances to unhindered revival. In this vision from Lucas, it was unforgiveness and broken relationships. Uh, we wanna make sure that we are good in that department, that we don't just gloss over that, um, uh, glance over that too quickly, but we want to make sure we're good in these areas. And that alone causes me to pray because I know I have a lot of work to do. I think I'm good a lot of times, but real, real talk, God still uh, points out different areas in me that I need to work on. And that's a good thing. Um, it's better that I know what I need to work on than I don't. But God's working on that, working on me, uh, and great things are happening as a result. So there you have it. There is more by Randy Clark. Top five takeaways. I have 41 takeaways and you can look at that. I'm, I'm thinking it's in a link below by at this point. I'm still figuring out ways to optimize this channel by um, helping people in different ways. Hey, if you have suggestions or comments, please let me know. I don't know if I should do a Facebook page or something or if I should do like a blog or I, I, if I should do a podcast just to rip off this audio and, and make it happen like that. Um, anything you do, uh, uh, to help me grow, uh, I would appreciate that. And um, if uh, you, one of these five top top five highlights uh, is is spoke to you more loudly, please feel free and share. If you read the book and you have a different top takeaway, I'm interested. Share. Uh, I don't mind doing a part two sometime if if there's enough um, uh, conviction. Um, and, and encouragement from out there. So there you have it. Be in touch. Stay tuned for more. Have a blessed day.